I am a firm believer in the 80-20 rule. And once again, it is proving itself to be true. This time in the comments that we are getting on YouTube around Zoom and the questions, more specifically, the questions that we are getting in the YouTube comments about Zoom. I think we've done now maybe 10, 12 videos on video conferencing in general and Zoom specifically. And it seems to me that so many questions specifically about Zoom are falling into just two categories, which I would like to address here on the video today. What are those questions? Allow me to show you a few examples to sort of set the stage. Does the quality of the camera affect the effect on the background? Unfortunately, they do not give you the green screen option in Ireland, which by the way, editorial comment is not true, but we will explain why where he's confused here. It seems to be offered to US customers unless there's something, some setting that needs to be switched. Well, uh, that's a good question. Another question. I don't get it. Is there a paid version? My Zoom doesn't have the same stuff at the bottom of the screen and there's no settings. Let's, let's take a look at another question. Uh, you choose a little, little crosshair tool at 937. What little crosshair tool? This one specifically, again, asking questions about one of our main themes, the virtual background. And finally, so I used my new green screen today on a Zoom call and there were many times where my hand disappeared or my hair looked psychedelic. What do you think I'm doing? Oh, by the way, her dog Maya definitely did not like the opening of her green screen, which my dog doesn't like either. We will deal with that as well. But as you can see, there's two basic themes that people have questions about. One is about the settings, is about how they configure Zoom and why their version of Zoom looks different than this version of Zoom that I'm showing here. And people wonder if that's geographically based or paid versus free, and it's neither. It's how you set up Zoom. We will show you how to fix that today. The other question people have is about the virtual background. So many questions about the virtual background. I will endeavor to answer those questions for you today. That's all coming up on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? And today, as I mentioned on the show, I'd like to handle the two most prominent questions that we have been getting on YouTube about Zoom. And I am not exaggerating when I say I have answered these questions dozens, if not hundreds of times. People seem to get lost in the same places in Zoom. So I will put a time code in where if you are concerned about the green screen and virtual background options to jump ahead in the video, but we're gonna start by talking about your Zoom account and the settings and what options you have available because there is so much confusion about how the Zoom settings work and whether or not features are available for you if you're using the free version or if you happen to be in another country. People tend to get confused about this and I think it's more the way Zoom has set things up than individuals' problems. And the problem is you can, most people are first introduced to Zoom by being invited into a meeting where they don't need to have an account at all. You can be, if you're invited into a meeting and sent a Zoom link, you click on that link and whether you have a Zoom account or not, you can still go into that meeting and participate in that meeting. So people think that that is everything that there is to Zoom, but it's not. Zoom is broken down into two components, your account and the application. The application is where the meeting actually occurs, but your account is where most of the settings occurs, where you set up most of the different features and determines whether or not you're in the free version or the paid version of Zoom. So let me take you into that and show you the difference and show you where the different settings are so you don't get lost in Zoom anymore. Sound like a plan? It does. We will begin by showing you uh, how a Zoom account works. Now this is if you are setting up and hosting your own meeting. This is when you create a Zoom account and you go to the Zoom homepage and you either sign in or you sign up at the Zoom homepage. When you sign into your existing account, allow me to do that, and I signed into my paid account, to my main account here, you are brought into your account settings. This page within your web browser is where you set all of the global settings for the Zoom app itself. The Zoom app, which I will invoke here, let me just open a new window and I will start a meeting and I've got it set as a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to start a meeting so that we have the Zoom app open at the same time. The Zoom app is where the actual meeting occurs. It's a download that happens on your computer and you can see it running here. This is very familiar. This is where the meeting occurs. But all of the settings that we are gonna talk about happen here in the Zoom account. 
The question that people have that we've seen over and over again is I show different features here in the Zoom app down here in the bottom. I show different features along the bottom and they say, I don't have those features. It must be the fact that I haven't got the paid version. Well, in fact, the paid version and the free version are virtually identical with only a few feature differences. For the most part, all of the features are there, but they aren't always turned on because Zoom has within the account settings, two places that you set meeting parameters, that you set kind of how your meeting is set up and how your app works. When you create a brand new meeting, right from the start, you can go in and if you schedule a new meeting as opposed to just starting one ad hoc, like on the fly, if you schedule a meeting, you've got all of these different settings that allow you to invite people into them, create a meeting description, schedule a time for it to start, and do some more advanced features such as having everybody muted upon entry, which is a great way to control especially a large meeting and not make it too busy to have all of your participants muted. You can choose to only have authenticated users or people with accounts sign in. You can assign breakout rooms if you've got breakout rooms turned on. So you've got some settings here that are meeting specific for an individual meeting you're going into to set up all of the parameters for the app itself to set up what you know what settings we see here along the bottom what tools we have access to for example as well as others for that from the account window we go into settings and this is the place that most people don't go and this is really kind of, it's, it's like Aladdin's cave. We go in here and we find all of the magic that we're looking for in order to customize the Zoom app when we launch the Zoom app with the goodies that I've been showing you in all of our videos. If you scroll through this, you will see that you have in here, let me take, show you a few examples. You have the ability to turn on and off the requirement to have a password before you join. Scrolling down a little bit more, let's look at some of the ones that people specifically are having issues with. If we go into the basic meeting tools here, ah, you can turn on and off chat here. You can allow or, pre uh, or prevent the attendees from saving the chat. You see how we have control of that? You can turn on private chat between individuals within the meeting so that they can chat privately and the entire group doesn't know it. See, all of these features are here. And, and by turning on and off these toggle switches, you can enable or disable it. If you want to have be able to have people transfer files to, to off, uh, offer files for download, you can turn this on here. Going through it, you can turn on and off the ability to add a co-host. The polling feature is one that is only available in the paid version, but you go here to turn it on. And that's a question we get a lot. Ah, because I think I might have said at one point that polling was included for free. If I did, my apologies, uh, I was wrong. Uh, continuing on through, we can turn on and off the ability to have the whiteboard. Again, all of these, not all of these are turned on. And the reason not all of them are turned on really comes down to, I think, these, these tools here, the breakout room and the remote support. The breakout room is one that allows you to take all of your participants within the Zoom meeting and divide them into smaller working groups and then bring them back together at the end. If you've got that turned on, you can't have remote support turned on. Remote support, we've just recently done a video on, is where it allows you to take over control of a remote computer if you're doing technical support or teaching somebody and you wanna show them on their computer themselves. It's a great feature for doing all sorts of different support and training, but you can't have it and the breakout room turned on at the same time. So basically what Zoom does is they, they give you access to all of the tools in here, but they only turn on the basic ones when you set up your account and they allow you to customize your own app for your own purposes. So you wanna spend time, go through it. They're all well explained, or we have videos on many of these different tools. But if I show something here in the Zoom screen that you don't have access to, you go, into your account settings. And once again, I'll navigate you into it. You go into your account, go into settings, and there you will find the ability to, to have all of these different features available to you. So all of your global settings and your meeting specific settings are set up in your account before you launch a meeting. But you still have, once you launch a meeting, another area of control. And that is you can go in once you're in the meeting, and I'm here in the app now, I'm not in the account, but I'm in the app itself. You can then make yourself familiar with what's available to you here in the preferences menu 
within the app itself. And this allows you, allows you to override several of the settings that you set previously in the account settings, and then also granularly deal with the individual settings that you might want to tweak for the meeting that you are in specifically. Uh, so they have general settings, which allows things like using dual monitors, asking whether you want to be confirmed when you're exiting a meeting, so it, uh, it gives you a confirmation screen, those sorts of things. And again, I'm not going to go through all of these right now, but you should make yourself familiar with these. Now, let me deal with the other big question, and that is the question about the virtual background. So many questions about the virtual background. And I gotta tell you, just, just as a purely editorial thing, I'm really past the whole virtual background thing. I realize that for branding purposes, you might wanna have a virtual background to kinda of have your business logo. And for those of you who are in a less than optimal recording environment, maybe you've got a little bit of a messy background or it doesn't look really professional and you wanna blur it, you know, kind of change that background, change the impression, I get it for that. And I would rather you use Zoom and in, uh, participate in the meeting. But if you've got a nice background like I have here, I set this up for video, I don't see the point in using a virtual background. I would rather not have to ask my computer to do all of the machinations and not go through all of the virtual background stuff. But that's a purely editorial comment. Let me show you how you can make it work because the virtual background and green screen are kissing cousins, but they aren't the same thing. So question number one, I don't have the same options as you in the virtual background. Why not? The reason is nothing to do with paid version. It's nothing to do with regional version. It's to do with how much processing power your computer has. It takes a lot of processing for Zoom to take this background image and convert it to this image here, to change it and put that in place. It just takes a lot of processing power to do that. And actually it's doing a pretty good job right now, but still, you can see it's still kind of blurring. But that's because I have a fairly powerful computer that I am running this with. If you don't have a very powerful computer, Zoom will struggle with it, and so Zoom won't even try. If you don't have enough horsepower in your computer, it won't give you the option to say have a video running in the background. So Zoom will check your computer, see how much processing power there is. Chances are it will give you this option here of being able to give you a virtual background with a still image. Most computers today are going to be handled that, able to handle that. But it may not give you this option here, which is to run a video in the background, which you can see running here. So it might not give you that option. But Zoom has to work very hard. The reason that you kind of see things breaking and kind of blurring around the edge is Zoom does a lot of work in order to make this look semi-decent. And of course, the less I move, the better it looks because it's basically got to process that information every time you make a move. That is for the virtual background. Now, let's talk about the green screen option, which is similar to the virtual background, but it's a little bit different. There are a few different settings. So let me dive in and show you exactly what those are. Now, I'm not gonna bother setting up my green screen. I did it before in this other video. You can check out the previous video that I did it in. I hate setting up the green screen. But here's how you use it. You turn on the green screen once you've got it set up. Now it could be a green screen, it can be a blue screen behind you. Once you've turned that on and you choose a background you wanna use, what will happen is Zoom will try and find the color and it will tell you what the color is right here. If you take a look down here, this little dot here, this is where Zoom gives you the option, opportunity to kind of create an eyedropper tool where you click on it and then you click on whatever the background color is gonna be Click on the green screen and that will determine the background color. If not, it tries and figures it out. Now, obviously it's a mess here going on right now because I don't have a green screen. But for example, if my orange shirt was the green screen, I can click on it. And you see now my orange shirt is working pretty well as a green screen showing the background through. Uh, but it's always going to struggle unless you determine exactly. And you can actually see, see the little bit of an orange color being shown right there? So it's gonna look for the green screen this way. And then by clicking there and then clicking on the screen itself on the green area, you will properly set up your green screen key and your background image, whatever you've loaded in or whatever you're using as your background image will display elegantly and properly through it. That's the key to setting up the green screen. That's it. I hope that you found this video today to be useful. I believe we have answered the two biggest questions people have about using Zoom. And if you have any other questions or you want to master Zoom in other ways, we have a plethora 
of other videos for you to peruse in order to up your Zoom game specifically. I encourage you to watch each and every one of them. And if you find them valuable, as if you found this one valuable, please give us a thumbs up and comment on them on YouTube. I do read each and every comment. And if you have questions, I do my best to answer them as I think we did here in today's video. So I look forward to seeing your comments online. If you've not yet subscribed to this channel, I have one question for you. What the heck are you waiting for? Please click on that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and I will see you next time for more Dotto Tech. Until then, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming the castle.